Hey, AP Statistics, welcome to chapter eight. This is a big one, estimating with confidence. This is where we're gonna learn how to do confidence intervals, one of our two major forms of inference that we'll do. Um, by the end of this first section, you should be able to identify an appropriate point estimator and calculate the value of a point estimate, interpret a confidence interval in context, determine the point estimate and margin of error from a confidence interval, use a confidence interval to make a decision about the value of a parameter, interpret a confidence level in context, describe how, to, how the sample size and confidence level affect the margin of error, uh, ex and explain how practical issues like non-response, under coverage, and response bias can affect the interpretation of a confidence interval. So. We're going to start out with point estimators. A point estimator is a statistic that is proven to estimate, uh, sorry, that provides an estimate of a population parameter. The value of that statistic uh, from a sample is called a point estimate. So our most common point estimates we're going to be focused on are X bar. Uh, when you get a single sample mean from a um, population, there's a population, you can choose your sample and you get an X bar from that one sample. That X bar is your point estimate for the population parameter mu. And p hat will be the other one we're really focused on. We're a sample proportion uh, estimating the population parameter p, the actual population proportion. Uh, so for example, uh, identify the point estimator you would use to estimate the parameter in each of the following settings and calculate the value of the point estimate. Quality control inspectors want to estimate the mean lifetime mu of AA batteries produced uh, each hour at the factory. They select a random sample of 50 batteries during each hour of production and then drain them under conditions that mimic normal use. Here are the lifetimes in hours of the batteries uh, from one such sample. And so this is what statistics starts looking at at the beginning, right? It's a wall of data. Um, so our point estimate um, that we're gonna use here is um, the sample mean. So we add up those 50 numbers, divide by 50, and so we have an average of 16.178. Uh, and that's our point estimator for that population mean mu. All right, what about the proportion P of US adults uh, that would classify themselves as vegan or vegetarian? And so they do this survey, they surveyed this many people, got that many that said they were vegan or vegetarian. So the point estimate in that case is P hat, just that proportion 124 over 1473. All right, what about one more? Uh, the quality control inspectors of, in part A want to investigate the variability in battery lifetimes by estimating the population standard deviation. So this isn't one I mentioned, but what would we use to estimate that population standard deviation? Well, it is sample standard deviation. Turns out that that is a good uh, estimator of that population uh, standard deviation. It is an unbiased statistic. It's the point estimator we would use. So in that sample, in those 50, that wall of 50 numbers, we calculate that standard deviation, S of X is 0.664, and so that would be our point estimate. Uh, when the estimate of a parameter is reported as an interval of values, it is called uh, an interval estimate or confidence interval. All right, And so by actually giving an interval to the range of values, if we do a point estimate, it might be right, it might be off. You know, there's, um, it's, we, we can't really be sure. But if we give an interval estimate, we can actually have some level of confidence uh, with that interval estimate. And so that's what we want to be able to do. We can actually be fairly certain that we, we are right. Whereas with a point estimate, we have little to no certainty that it's actually right. Uh, that X bar, that P hat might be higher or lower. Um, it's probably not exactly right. So a confidence interval gives an interval of plausible values for a parameter based on sample data. Plausible does not mean the same thing as possible. Remember, with statistics, randomness, possible, any, almost anything is possible. But plausible means uh, that we shouldn't be surprised if any one of the values in the interval is equal to the value of the parameter. And so this is important to start getting this, these big ideas of what is a confidence interval. Like this is, this is stuff that people screw up. It it's, gives us a range of plausible values for a parameter. Confidence intervals are constructed so that we know just how much confidence we should have in an interval. So the most common confidence level we use is 95%, but we'll also use ones like 99% or 90. Usually we want to be pretty confident or pretty high numbers, but um, you know, a 95% confidence interval is probably the most com common one. And so the confidence level C, so in this case, 90, C is 95%, uh, but C could be 99 or 98 or 99.9, .9, uh, gives the overall success rate that the method used to calculate the confidence uh, 
sorry, of the method used to calculate the confidence interval. That is in C percent of all possible samples, the interval um, computed from the sample data will capture the true parameter value. And so that's an important thing to realize that confidence is the confidence is in the process. Um, and there's, they're really picky about this interpretation. We're, we're confident in this process. If we repeated this process many, 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 many times, 95% of the time it works, right? That's, that's what a confidence level of 95% would be. Um, so you will learn to interpret how confidence, interpret confidence levels specifically uh, shortly. But that's the idea of a confidence level. When we're talk, talking about being 95% confident, we're confident in that, pro in that process. A specific interval uh, to interpret a C percent confidence interval uh, for an unknown parameter, we say, and you can basically follow this language verbatim, we are C percent confident, and you can just use that word, that the interval from blank to blank captures the, and then parameter in context. Um, and so we'll practice that, um, but you can pretty much just memorize that statement um, and, and that works. Um, don't say there's a 95% chance though. It's very key that that's, that that's the word uh, we say that we're confident. Um, you know, certain is okay, but really just, you can use that confidence word. And then if you have to explain what confidence means, like, well, if we repeated this process over and over and over again, it works that percent of the time, right? It, it captures the actual parameter. Um, so when interpreting a confidence interval, make sure that you are describing the parameter and not the statistic. So yeah, the parameter is the, the mean of all. And, and so people get those confused that um, this range captures the, the mean of all or the proportion of all um, in the individuals in the population. Uh, to create a, an interval of plausible values for a parameter, we need two components, a point estimate to use as the midpoint of the interval, and a margin of error to account for some sampling variability. We realize that that x bar or p hat might be off a little bit. So we start with our point estimate in the middle, and then we go plus or minus a margin of error to give us some bounds for our confidence interval. That actually ends up creating an interval. So for instance, we could have a point estimate like 0.65 plus or minus a margin of error 0.037. So it looks like this. We go up and down that margin of error. And so we actually get a lower bound and an upper bound. Um, and so we could then make that confidence statement. We are 95% confident that the interval from 0.613 to 0.687 contains the actual parameter. In this case, I think it's the proportion of all U.S. adults who would admit to experiencing some financial difficulty. Um, and so that what we add or subtract, that's the big tricky calculation. This is pretty easy. The trickier calculation is the margin of error. The margin of error is an, uh, of an estimate describes how far at most we expect the estimate to vary from the true po uh, population value. Um, and so that is in C percent confidence interval, um, the distance between the point estimate and the true parameter value will be less than the margin of error in C percent of all samples. Uh, that's kind of confusing, but you know, for 95% confident, let's take the C out of it. For 95% confident, we want to cover a distance that 95% of samples are within that range, um, so that we can be 95% confident that when we give this range, it's kind of weird. We uh, we want to understand, and this gets back to sampling distributions from last chapter. What range covers 95% of you know sample means or sample proportions or something like that? And then whatever that range is, when we go back to our single statistic, we say, okay, well, we're pretty sure then that the parameter is within that range. In reality, we never actually know that parameter for that sampling distribution, but we want to make some decisions based on uh, understanding sampling distributions. All right, example problem. Two weeks before a presidential election, a polling organization asked a random sample of registered voters the following question. If the presidential election were held today, would you vote for... Candidate A or candidate B. Based on this poll, 95, uh, the 95% confidence interval for the population proportion who favor candidate A is 0.48 to 0.54. Um, and so that's one thing that's funny. Confidence intervals, you see this. People cite statistics from studies and research all the time, but they rarely give confidence intervals in, in like popular news media. But then right around election time, all of a sudden we do because we realize that sometimes they make mistakes and they go above or below the 50% threshold. And, and so that's just one thing that people should be reporting more as those confidence intervals, not just stating their point estimates, their statistics like they are factual parameters. Anyways, uh, that, that aside, um, so we've got this interval for the proportion in the population. We are 95% confident that the, that range uh, captures the actual proportion that are going to vote that are that favor candidate A. 
So, um, yeah, that is basically what we did there. We are 95% confident that the, for interpreting it, we're 95% confident that an interval from 0.48 to 0.54 captures the true proportion of all registered voters who favor candidate A in the election. Uh, what is the point estimate that was used to create the interval, and what is the margin of error? So kind of funny, this is a little weird problem. They didn't actually tell us what the sample proportion is, but we can figure it out from the interval. The point estimate is going to be right in the middle of the interval. And so that's the first thing we can figure out. And then the margin of error is going to be the distance from the ends to the middle. And so you can either do, you know, actually every confidence interval, one thing is... Every, the range of every confidence interval is two margins of error wide. So you can also do these, this difference divided by two. A couple ways that we can approach that. But uh, the point estimate, we add those up and average them, and we get that middle. And then the margin of error, you can just do from 0.54 down to 0.51, or 0.51 down to 0.48, or that distance divided by two. Last question here. Based on this poll, a political reporter claims that the majority of registered voters favor candidate A. Use the confidence interval to evaluate this claim. So does that seem right, that the, the majority? So that point estimate was 51%. That sample proportion was 51%. But this range of plausible values includes some in which we're less than 50%. So because there are plausible values of P less than or equal to 0.5, in that confidence interval, the interval does not give convincing evidence that the majority, more than 50%, of registered voters favor candidate A. We really can't be sure whether it's above or below a majority. Yes, more of the interval is up there, but that's... That's not the, the way we should approach this. Just what we're saying here is that it's completely plausible, believable, you know, that, that we would get um, proportions below uh, 0.48. That happens, you know, that, that we would be off by this, you know, this percentage um, in 95% you know, of the time. So, um, and then interpreting a confidence level, uh, make sure you do have this interpret a confidence level C. We say if we were to select many random samples, from a population and construct a C% percent confidence interval using each sample, about C% percent of intervals would capture the parameter in context. So um, we, when we interpret our confidence interval, we can just say we're blank percent confident that the interval from blank to blank, number to number, captures the actual mean, proportion, whatever it is you're studying. And then if they say, you know, what does confidence mean? Well, it means if we repeated that process many times, 95% of the time or whatever C is, that percent of the time, we actually, our interval will capture the parameter. Um, you can pretty much just memorize those things, think about what they, you can think about what they mean, but um, we don't want to talk about the probability that our interval contains a parameter because in the end, our interval is fixed and the parameter is fixed. And so there's not, it really doesn't make sense to talk about probability. This is their big argument about this, that um, our interval has a range of two numbers. The parameter is either in it or out. Um, and so, but nothing is moving at this point. Prior to doing a confidence interval, you could say there's a percent chance that that interval will capture the actual parameter. But uh, after you've done it, you've you kind of laid your bounds. You either did or didn't. We just talk about a confidence in whether or not we did. All right, another problem here. Two weeks before a presidential election, uh, same, same deal here. Uh, a polling organization asks a random sample of registered voters the following question. If the president election were held today, would you vote for candidate A or B? Based on this poll, 95% confidence interval goes from that range to that range. Uh, and so interpret that. If we were to select many random samples of registered voters and construct a 95% confidence interval using each sample, about 95% of the individuals intervals would can capture the true proportion of all registered voters who favor candidate A in the election. So if we repeated this process, we would get different intervals. 95% of those intervals would capture the true parameter. I don't actually know for sure that the true parameter is in this range. I still don't know what it is. I'm pretty sure it's in that range. But turns out that's just one of many potential intervals. Um, and so we can look at that here. This is a really good kind of graph to understand it. Um, these are all intervals here. They're, they're showing a whole bunch of intervals. And so ours is just one of those intervals. Maybe it's this one here that actually captures the parameter. In this case, they're showing means, so it couldn't be the, purport, uh, the same as our proportions. But um, realize that some of those intervals actually capture it. 95% do if you're 95% confident. Some don't. Um, so uh, once a particular confidence interval is calculated, its endpoints are fixed. And because the value of the parameter is also a constant, a particular confidence interval either includes the parameter, which is a probability of one, or does not include the parameter. Right? What's the probability this interval doesn't include the parameter? Uh, it, it, or the it includes it as zero. The probability this one includes the parameter is one. So that's why they're very picky about not um, saying the chance 
the confidence interval does not tell us the probability that a particular confidence interval captures the population parameter. It tells us that over the long run, if we repeated this process, that percent of the time it is successful. Um, so AP exam tip, on a given problem, you may be asked to interpret the confidence interval, the confidence level, or both. So be sure that you understand the difference. Uh, the confidence interval gives us the range of plausible values for the parameter, and the confidence level describes uh, the overall capture rate of that method. So our confidence in the process versus the range of plausible values for a um, parameter.